Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Runt, and today what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this program using the CNC base for IntelliTech. So I'm going to drag and drop this into the software when we get it open. So I'm going to pull this off to here. We're going to open this up. So when this opens up, it's going to have some default settings. Now this might not look like yours. You can position these however you need them to. So I've got a blank slate here. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my program right here. It'll open up. You can see that I have all this information. Usually what I do is I kind of pull it over so that I can maximize my window. So I have all this right here. Now this cannot be edited. So what that means is if I need to make an edit, I would open up my original program and start making the edits from there. And then I would re-upload or re-drag and drop that program. So I have it in here uh, to keep from getting any alarms from here. I'm going to home my machine. Just do a home on here. That way it gets rid of any uh, alarms I have. So when this was all installed, it was set up for a ProMill 8000. If you are not on an 8000, you'll have to go into your settings and change it to whatever machine you're on. But again, we are just going to use this software to simulate a program. First thing I want to do is I'm going to look at my information here. I have a material information. I have location for my X, Y, zero and my Z. I also have a tool list right here. So right, this information right here is all we're going to look at. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my material. So right here in my verify window, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to setup. Now a couple of these icons at the top will do the same thing. And there are some icons in the program and tools that also will take you to the same page. So, but I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to setup and I'm going to go to view. Now on my view, I'm going to go to solid mode. If I wanted to go to center line mode, I could, but I'm going to keep it on solid. I can change my views. I'm going to go to my stock. Now here's where I want to start entering in my dimensions. So I have a four inch by four inch by half inch. So I'm going to type in four inches, tab, four inches, tab, half inch tab and this space here you can put it at zero or one doesn't matter um, but the next thing I want to look at is it thinks if you notice in my window right here it thinks that my zero is going to be right here at the bottom left now if you look it does say X Y zero is the top left corner now keep in mind we're gonna have to shift this material, my stock. So my tool is right here. This piece sticking up right here. This is my tool, as you can see it right here. So what's going to happen is I need my tool to be up here. So let's see if we can get this to view in right here. So I'm going to go to my origin. My X is good. I'm going to go to my Y and I'm going to move the stock, not the tool. I'm going to move the stock a minus four inches. And then when I just click in the Z, you'll see that it moved my tool up to the top left corner. Okay, so remember, moving this will actually move your stock to the right location. From here, I'm just going to click OK. You can see that my material has updated. It does show my tool at the zero, so on and so forth. Just get the in your head that you're moving the material. You're not moving the tool. We've already set our material, we've set our zeros. Now all we have to do is go into our tools and set our tool list. So I'm going to come up to tools. I'm going to go to setup library. Now you'll notice tool zero is just for reference. We're not going to mess with it. So I'm going to go to tool one and it has already been selected as a tool type. It shows it to be an end mill, which is fine. And I'm going to call this tool number one, the three quarter diameter end mill. So I'm going to type in 750 thousandths and then I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to click on tool number two. So it's that fast. I'm going to come to tool number two. Tool type is going to be a end mill. Of course, I can make it a ball nose, a bull nose end mill, a drill and a tapered end mill. So we'll be using drills and end mills for this simulation. I'll click on end mill. I'll call this tool number two and it is a half inch tool and then I'll hit apply and then I'll do the same thing for three four and five so I'll click on three I'm gonna to call tool number three an end mill we're gonna call it tool 
number three, it is 250 thousandths. If you look right here, it says 250 thousandths with zero radius. Click apply. I'll cursor down here. I have multiple tools I can set up. Tool number four is going to be a drill. It is a center drill. So I'll call this tool number four. And we're just going to call this 125 thousandths, just the bottom of that center drill. Again, this is for simulation purposes. So the last one we'll go do is another drill. Call this tool number five. And it's going to be a half inch. And we'll hit apply. So now I have all my tool set. Now what happens if, let's say, I have cutter comp in my program for tool number two? It's a half inch. My machine needs to know the offset for picking up cutter compensation. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to come up here to setup. I'm going to go to offsets and right here in the offset value I'm going to click the tool number two whichever the D value is in your program and you'll enter half the diameter of the tool. So if it was a half inch I would enter 250 thousandths I'll just click off of it and it will set it. Now because my program is not reading a D value this will do nothing to my program that I currently have in my simulation. So I will click OK. So now we have our material set, we have our zero set, and we have our material or our, our tool set. So now we're going to go into how we simulate this part. Now I can move my image however I need it to look at it. I can increase the simulation until that goes gray, it's at the fastest speed, and I can decrease the simulation speed. But we're going to go about halfway through it. I'm going to give us a pretty good isometric view right here. Down here on Machine Info, it's going to tell us our tools, but it will show us a portion of our program right here. So I'm going to put my machine right here into Optional Stop. I don't want to do single block because my program is very big, so it would take a long while to single block through it. But if you need to single block it, you have to turn this on before you verify. So I'm going to make sure it's off. I'm going to come up here to program. I want to verify by pushing F6 and then it's going to ask us to hit continue by pushing F5. So you also have this right here which is verify and it's going to bring up this portion right here. So it wants to run this program. It's going to start at line number one. I just want to verify. So you see down here it did stop on my optional stop and it wants me to hit F5 to continue. So when I push F5, it is going to install the tool number one and then it is going to face my material. So I'll push F5 one more time to insert the tool and you'll see that it ran really quickly. So I'm going to slow this down for the next one. And I simply hit F5 again. Now that's going really slow. So again, I can speed this up however fast I need to so I can see all the moves. But if you're looking for something at a certain point in your program, you can see what line that it's on and what's happening on the code so we can see everything but we're just simulating to make sure nothing's wrong so I'm going to speed that up all the way and you can see that whenever I run my facing pass it does kind of hide it so there's not a way to change the tool simulation colors that I know of but once you've ran a part of your simulation you can click right here for reset and it will reset this to the block size so you can go back and look at it. So I'm going to slow this down for the next par portion of it and I'm going to hit reset and then I'll hit F5. So F5 goes across, of course that is done from the facing and you can see that it is doing my pocketing. I'll speed it up just a little bit so you can see it going and then it does my first pocket and then it will do my second pocket. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to call up tool number four. It's going to do my center drill and the next thing it's going to do is my half inch drill. So that's all done. So if I wanted to I can go ahead and speed this all the way up until my plus arrow goes gray. I can turn off optional stop and I can just go ahead and go back to verify so I can run the whole program. And I'm just hitting F5. I'm going to let this run all the way through and then I'll show you what happens if you start manipulating the the view of the program while it's running. So again, this is not a ham programmed part. This is something that has been ran in a cam software. 
So when I hit OK, if I go to tilt it, you'll notice that it recreates everything in there. So, but here's the thing, I want to start on a certain line of code. So what I'll do is I want to start right here on these pockets so that I can see where it's actually running. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to go to verify. Now I know it's at line 388. I'm going to click on verify program. Go ahead and slow this down. Now I can't go into single block. I'd like to be able to single block and see everything, but when you single block, it makes you go through all these lines of codes to be able to do it. So I'm simply going to slow down my simulation and go to my tool and you'll see that it loads tool one and then it goes down there but you see it will skip down to line 388 and I'll simply hit F5 again where it changes our tool slow that down and you can see that it starts making my pocket so again I'll speed it up we can see everything that it's doing and again it did not run any of my previous toolpath because we did skip down to that area of the program it'll run those pockets and it will be done this is how you would run your parts through the simulator to be able to check your program. We have set up the material, we have set up the origin, and we've set up our tools, and we've gone through and verified our program. Again, my name is Aaron Runt. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps in simulating your programs.